<laughs> there you are. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey, girl. How, How are you? I'm great. You always got some fly glasses on, honey. Thank you. <laughs> I'm cold. I'm going in my room, my office. It's cold in here. Can you hear me? Month. Huh? Huh? Oh, yes, Women in History Month. Thank you, thank you. Yes, honey. That, um, you put the cherry on top for my Women's History Month, honey. <laughs> uh, I love that video that you did. Oh, thank you. You know, I had to do something hot for you. I know, I gotta repost that. I'm gonna do it in a second. I'll repost yeah. it. Today. So thanks for doing I Come With Baggage. So uh, for those who are joining us who don't know, I had a, uh, you know, came up with this t-shirt thing for travel because I love travel. And one of my hundreds of slogans was I Come With Baggage that Kalila very quickly told me, since you got too many, <laughs> yes. you need to delete some and let the business just guide you. So this ended up being the bestseller. And so uh, one of my lovely uh, team members who's, who's on here now gave me the idea of doing these chats because as we had talked about before, mm -hmm. the reason I come with baggage is because I come with so much baggage of, you know, a, a teen mom, a, a prison sentence, a, a accused of murder, a kidnapping. So I come with all this baggage mm -hmm. and I love to travel. So thanks so much for joining me tonight and of i know you have, some, you have some baggage um Hello, surrounding your black business <laughs> you, <laughs> your black owned business so i want you to introduce yourself like i want to give you your flowers while you're here but i want you to introduce yourself because you know i'm super duper fond of you but i want you, you to introduce yourself okay so hi, everyone that's on the check-in. Um, my name is Kaliba Wright, and I am the owner of a power brand, Mess in a Bottle. And so Mess in a Bottle is a t-shirt company that comes, um, we put messages on t-shirts, and they come packaged in a reusable bottle. And how did you come up with that? It's so clever and so unique. How did you come up with that? Um, so I started Mess in a Bottle in 2016. Um, you know, I being in Baltimore and having, you know, just being engulfed in all of the things that was going on with the Freddie Gray, you know, riot, um, riots and uprising, you know, it just really um, kind of prompted me to want to put a message and create and come up with a message. And that's really how Mess in a Bottle was erected and started. And, you know, I just figured it would be really cool to um, start in a power brand that has um, messages that come packaged and, you know, this reusable bottle. And that's the thing, that bottle. I see somebody is put in Baltimore. So, you know, I didn't claim to you. I'm like Jamaica by way of New York, by way yes. of from Baltimore. <laughs> right, at this point. <laughs> yes, I didn't claim you. So I wanted to talk about your baggage because as you know, someone has sent me a video of you during the madness of, I think, Black Friday, right? Okay. Was it Black mm -hmm. Friday? Yeah. And they sent me this video of you where you were hurting and you were crying. Mm -hmm. And I broke down and I was crying. And I was like, I got to do something nice for her. Like, I just wanted and to And you sent me some beautiful today. flowers. Yeah, so I sent the flowers. But I just wanted to talk about it because people always see the end result. Like, they're seeing you in Target right now. So mm -hmm. people see all this great this stuff, but they don't see what it took for you to get there. So Vicky, go ahead. Yep. Sorry. I'm trying to get printed. You know, okay. I'm doing work, too. <laughs> I already but know. But, yes, they don't, they don't see all of the stuff that it takes to get us there. Yeah, so tell us about that moment. So I know things were happening with the mail um, and then people were sending you like rude emails because with a black owned business, our own people have higher expectations of us than if they're buying it from anywhere else. We know they would right. not harass Nordstrom or, or any of these big box companies, brands, white businesses. But when it comes to us, there's a different standard. Right. So can you, can you talk about that part? Um, so yeah, I think that, you know, the holidays were here. And I think it was probably um, from the other side, 
that, you know, um, people don't understand what COVID has, you know, really done and how it has catapulted and affected our business. You know, like, so what I try to tell people all the time is um, having an influx of orders, you know, and very sporadic and like this much of it, it can also create, you know, turmoil for a business to end up closing as well. And so I think that people don't understand um, that overwhelming response, you know, definitely could negatively impact um, a business. And, um, you know, if you're not prepared and if there's not, you know, just enough resources and for you to have this, um, you know, for it to go smoothly. And I think that's what we saw. And then especially with COVID being new, like people don't understand, you know, resources were limited, you know, some of the things that we would receive and wasn't available. Like there was just a lot of dynamics that really shifted and changed um, due to COVID. And so, um, you know, and it was the beginning of it. So it was a little bit you know, confusing, you don't know what's happening, what to do, you know, why things are the way that it, they were. Um, so it was just really overwhelming. Um, it was stressful. And so, you know, um, I definitely um, learned from the experience. But I mean, I think at the end of the day, no matter how much you try to do better, um, you know, you probably would have still had like, you know, large companies are the United States Post Office is still struggling. And they're a humongous organization, you know, so and it's been months after, you know, um, after, you know, since COVID has for it's been a whole year, and they're still yeah. having a really difficult time. So, you know, I think that it's just one of those things um, that it was, um, it's a difficult thing. A lot of people don't understand, you know, what and these are times where businesses can fail, you know, yeah. and they can tank. But I am happy to see you are thriving. And I'm happy to see that you have far more, what would it looks like to me, far more support <laughs> than the naysayers. And right. I also see where you are crossing over into a very diverse market. Yes. Which it's I'm, all right. We still got Black women um, supporting us. We do. For the we have most part. of black women. Right. But, you know, I don't mind taking the money from everybody, right? Right. Because y your message, if it resonates with other women, mm -hmm. they should be able to wear it without mm -hmm. um, black Twitter or, or people getting angry about it. So can we, so we talked about this very, very briefly, but I was telling you a friend of mine, I'm not on Twitter. And she mm -hmm. called me about some things on Twitter saying, I feel like I have to defend her. And so can you mm -hmm. tell me about that? Because I never really got the full understanding of what was happening on Twitter. Well, I don't know. I'm not on Twitter as much either. I mean, I think that, you know, people all, you know, all in all, what I'm learning, like, you know, um, I think I posted something recently about, um, I think Jackie Ina, um, a very famous, like, influencer, like, she did a post, like, and it says, like, what are you constructing, you know, and it's like, until you construct something, maybe you could tell me, like, almost like how to build a building. And so everyone thinks they know how to run a business. Everyone thinks they know what it is like to be a business owner. Um, but the reality of it is, um, that, you know, until you really walk a mile in my shoe, you really can't say anything about my shoes. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> and then I think that, you know, and I mean, the reality of it is um, everyone you handle, you know, just because you may not see what a big box retailer or, you know, I allow people to sort of come into the back end of my business and see some some of the things that I go through. Um, but not everyone is that brave. And so I think at the end of yep. the day, you know, like whether I think, you know, and I, I it's twofold. Um, I've learned to really be a bit um, empathetic to the people who are coming off nasty. At the end of the day, I mean, there's two different types of customers. There's one customer who may come and they may be angry because they just really didn't get their stuff and they really, you know, wanted it and they were really passionate about it. So I get, you know, where the disappointment lays with those type of people. But there are people who are giving us a chance and are like, I just knew you were going to fail because, you know, and so there are those people. And I think those people, of course, I'm a little bit more defensive because, you know, it's just the one thing where it's like the one package you don't want to get lost is that person. And that's the package that will disappear, get lost, 
we messed it up. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I try to remind um, remind them and myself, like, we, we're not machines. Like, we are human. We're running a business. Like, things happen. Mistakes happen. As you said, the largest of the largest companies, like, they may trip up and they may make a mistake as well. And they may, you know, not send out the correct item. Things happen. And so I think that, you know, um, I've been able to get through it by just telling myself if like 90% or even 95% of the customers are happy, I'm okay. You know, like the other 5% or, you know, or more, you know, if it's 5 to 10%, they'll be all right, you know, and that you win some, you lose some. So Yeah. yeah. And I, and I think that is so true. Like, like I said, we, we are held to a different standard. Someone just said in the comments, you know, people spend all that money at Starbucks, they mess up their order, and those people are right back in the line the next day. But Correct. like you said, give us a chance. They give us that one chance, and then they write us off if something mm -hmm. happens. And mm -hmm. like, I, I learned something from you. I think as soon as I left your shop one day, I got a text that someone's t-shirt came wrong. And I was like, I just want to do it myself. <laughs> I, I hate that. You know, it was crooked. And you were like, okay, well, that can happen in the shop. So, so, you know, things happen and people have to be a little more understanding because I'm sure that this happens everywhere. I mean, big stories. I mean, but that's the thing, well. like, you know, and I get it. Like, so, you know, you guys are saying also in the comments, like, you know, give them grace and like, or more people need to give us grace. But do they, you know, like at the end of the day, I don't think that they do. I think that they need to decide, like, you know, are they willing to deal with the qualms of, smaller businesses because it's not just about black owned you know are you okay with if a smaller business has a longer delay on shipping are you okay with the you know fact that you know it may come you know and your resources you may not have tissue paper or you know and it's so i have a friend and she's like i and she her her mom taught her to intentionally shop with black businesses and to intentionally buy and she said because of that she has more of an understanding about like like, you know, if, you know, limited customer service, longer delays on shipping, you know, like whatever, especially because it's a small business and she's like, you know, she's willing to wait and she's okay with that. And so I think that, you know, but that's not every type of customer. Right. And so at the end of the day, I'm like, you know, I do put myself to a certain standard where I want the toughest of the tough to, you know, to sort of like, you know, drill us. And I, I am hopeful that we can make it and make sure that, you know, and again, it's how you handle the situation. Like for me, I'm very defensive to the people who are like really nasty or who curse or whatever and they get, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm also learning to be empathetic to those folks. Like, you know, cause I think my attitude at one point was just like, it's a t-shirt, it's, you know, it's $31. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I think the, you know, the 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 common consensus is like, I've spent my hard earned money with you and I want my product. And so I do try my best, you know, no matter, you know, what the customer is kind of dishing out to sort of still see if I could do my best to make them happy. Um, and not always just because the customer is always right, but because, you know, to be honest, again, as a business owner, I would rather you walk away and say like, oh, this company messed up, but you know what? She eventually fixed it rather than to be like, this company messed up and they never did anything. So, you know, I think it's more changing my mindset sometimes to some of these. And, and also it makes me evaluate and look at my situation also. Like I try to say, all right, are the FAQs correct in our website? Something like we're even doing today to fix. It's like, okay, does the customer truly understand that it takes this amount of time to ship and then it takes this amount of time to process the orders? You know, like, are we being clear enough so that, you know, like, so that it's not, I don't want you to shop with me just because I'm black. I want you to shop with me because I'm a dope ass motherfucking bi business owner. You don't. Period. <laughs> You know, you like, know, and so it's not, I don't need you to give me grace. I need you to make sure that my shit is also like up to par. And that is, you know, and so I think that I, I took from it that, you know, I, I don't, I don't need anybody's grace. Like, that's, you know, like, and I don't need anybody to be kinder to me because we're a black owned business. I want to make sure that my shit is up to par and that you, you know, that you got my, the foot on my neck. So I could know maybe I need to shift operations. Maybe I need to do something different. Maybe I need to make sure my, my Black Friday is starting in like June because they ain't never <laughs> right. going to say nothing to me about Black Friday 
And I make it so again. So. Well, so we don't we don't want to give you grace because you're black, but we we I would like for people to treat you the way they are going to treat the next business. I don't want people right. to put extra expectations on you because you're black. And I think one thing you do that's great. I think you are so brilliant with your transparency. Like I'm not that brave yet. You know what I mean? I I'm, I really respect your transparency and that you do let people into the back door. So people do see how hard you are busting your ass. Like I saw you spending the night in the store and I'm like, what can I do for you? Like, how can I help you? Like, do you need me babysit for you? You know, you got your kid in there. You are busting your ass and people are complaining. So I just want to thank you for being a great example for us being dope as shit and pouring into other people's business because a lot of people won't do it. You take the time as busy as you are to pour into others. So I am very grateful and appreciative of that. Thank you. Of so, course. So, I mean, I think, I feel like it's my duty in some, you know, some respect. Yeah. Since you're the, you're the best to ever do it. So a lot of people are going to hate just because of that. Now they want some of your merchandise because it's dope as shit. But at the same token, you know people can be haters on the low. You know what I mean? But <laughs> they want some of your shit because it's dope. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. And I want to say that I'm angry at myself because I did not order my head wrap in time that I wanted to be wearing for tonight. <laughs> oh, no. And you know we got it. You should have just came by the shop. I know. But, girl, I was running around chasing uh, vaccines. And I should have come down there. But I am. I'm going to come and pick up my thing. But I was chasing vaccines because me and my baggage need to get on a flight. OK. Because we yeah, out. Because you just came off your flight. And I was like FOMO. I was living yes. on you. <laughs> it was, was good, like, so Well needed. Yeah, so, so it was amazing? It was. It was Joshua Tree. It was my first time going to um, it was near Palm Springs, California, and it was just an amazing time around amazing people. Um, and you know, and it just and it just really reminds me of like the serenity that you know I'm in search of. You know what I wanted to ask you? Mm -hmm. So while you were away, when did you get to a comfortable place with leaving your business and just knowing that it was good in the hands of your team? Um, you know, I think that, again, it goes back to mindset. And, um, and I mean, I'm having to do a recalibration even now, like to really figure out like, you know, what do you want if you know, I don't want to be a slave to anybody's business, not even my own, to be honest, you know, and so like, I don't want to be I don't want to work a nine to five and feel like my boss runs my shit. And I don't want to feel like I can't step away from this if I want to either, you know? And so I think for me, um, I've truly just learned um, that even if it's my own, I'm not going to let it like run me into the ground. I want to take breaks when I need one. I want to, you know, so I think when it even comes to the team, I think the whole reason that I have team people and you know and team members um is because i want to be able to do other things in my business and i want the business to grow um i would say i mean it probably i didn't really get a staff until like around you know year three ish two and a half three of the business um okay. in which i really started getting like staff and team um team members but um yeah, I mean, the goal is to, you know, I'm not working this hard to work this hard, like, you know, <laughs> so I think that um, that's always been like, how do you evolve to the next place and the next place? So I will hope if you're hiring people, it is to ensure that they are going to be able to hold down the fort, you know, as much yeah. as possible. So that's the one thing we know that you work hard, but you make that shit look easy and you make <laughs> it look real good. <laughs> right. I try. Yeah, you do. You do a real good job. And, you know, we all aspire to, to, to just be able to do it, even even when I know you are, you know, you know, before you were having a rough time, but you wear it well and you wear it with grace. And, um, you know, I just appreciate that shit. Thank and I appreciate you. you taking the time to do all the things you do in the midst of all the things you have to do. Yeah. So yeah, what advice would you give to someone? Like, like you know, I said on my post, like you do the work, you do right. the work. 
So what advice would you give somebody who wanting to start a brand, you know, wanting to start up besides a plug, besides you guys take her tea courses when they're available, mm -hmm. what other advice would you give somebody? I mean, the real advice that I tell everyone is to honestly just start, um, start and really map it out. Like, you know, I think people have really great ideas. Um, but one, they're afraid to start, you know, so they don't even start it like, you know, so for example, you have, um, you know, you have your apparel brand, um, your t-shirt company, but then now you're doing these, these talks, you know, who knows, like these talks may be really why, what is the real, you know, part of your business and, you know, and the t-shirt was just like the entryway into what your real purpose is and what your real like goals are and i think that a lot of people don't really understand that um they you know they do this thing where they they don't they're afraid to start because they want like this full full picture they want um you know they want the end result or they want to know how the whole thing looks and the reality of it is you need to start i mean my company has like transformed in the last like five years you know, this wasn't something I didn't know it was going to be this. I didn't know I was going to have a place. I didn't know, I, you know, like there was just there's so much evolution to something. But it was about it starting and just going after it and just trying your best. And, you know, people don't even do that. And so, you know, I, I ignore 90 percent of the people who tell me they want to start a business because they don't. They just want to think about starting a business. Yeah. You know, you reiterated that, but that was some of the best advice you gave me. You were like, just let the business drive you. Like, see what your best seller is. Like, take this stuff down, play with stuff. And so what you said just really, really stuck out to me because it, it came with, I come with baggage, right? And that was the best seller. So it comes with, I come with baggage talks. I'm doing a, I come with baggage boot camp. Um, the virtual tour. And that I come with baggage doing. can be just on one product, like on a t-shirt, a tote bag, a mug, a sock, a passport case. Or the, you know, like there's just so much stuff that that one phrase can do opposed to you trying to have 45 and can't sell one. Yes. So that is the thing. When you, you told me, you was like, can't you just pick one and just do like God is dope? They just got one saying, you know, maybe you want to do that. So I have been considering as I let the business drive me because I just started it having no clue of what mm -hmm. I was doing or where I was going. But I'm just letting it guide me and drive me and different things are coming. So that is the key. Just start. Mm -hmm. just, just start somewhere. Yeah. yeah, so I appreciate that. You're welcome, yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> so anything you want to, people to do, follow you where? Um, yeah, you know. I mean, we have our tea classes, as you mentioned, um, the tea class com. We are launching, again, our t-shirt classes, how to start your own t-shirt company. Um, and I'll be really diving into that a lot um, starting in April and really going forward with like teaching people, you know, what to do, how to start in business. Like, you know, I'm learning a whole lot in business. So I definitely am going to be offering more like consultations and things on, you know, how to solidify and get your business off the ground. So I'm excited about that. Okay. Business as a whole or teaching? Yeah. Business? No, business. business as a whole. I do think that I have you know, some really good value in e-commerce business, mostly, like, you know, some online businesses. So I'm I do think I have. I know I'm you are. I know you are. But <laughs> yes, I think I have some really good insight on sort of how to catapult, you know, e-commerce businesses and get them off the ground. Okay. So, yeah, I know you had a, a call thing on Thursday. And Thursday is like the worst day for me. I have my mom on Thursdays. And so I have not been as diligent as possible as I could be on those mm. calls. But just trust and know, I am not that one that's going to be wasting your time, sis, out here working. I am I'm going really, to work. I'm really good. I'm proud of you. You know, yeah, I'm always I'm texting you and checking in, so I'm proud of you. Yeah. So, so thank you, girl. I feel so honored. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, oh, I wanted to talk about Target. Okay. Yes. So, you know, I was saying that how many times you know somebody that you say you know them and their phone them? Because I had this rule, right? When people say, like, co-workers, people that pass away, they're like, oh, you didn't go to the funeral, you go to the funeral. I'm like, I don't go to nobody's funeral whose phone right. number is not in my cell phone, okay? <laughs> I don't just run to funerals. So, I was telling people, like, 
you know, when I was running through Target and getting my shirts and stuff, I was like, how many times you know somebody that's up in these stores? Yes. So tell, tell us about that journey and what that felt like. That must feel so amazing. It did. Um, and it still does. It's, it's an amazing accomplishment. Um, so Target came to us um, last summer and they said, you know, we want to collaborate with you for Black History Month. And, you know, and not just that they wanted to um, partner with us, you know, Target was really invested in the growth of our company and, you know, how the business itself can um, advance and grow and change. So there's been, you know, like, so I think that I was really proud of the fact that they, you know, really wanted to help push our business along. And that's, you know, truly what has happened in the last couple of year, um, couple of months. And so they've worked on helping us develop our brand a little bit and then, you know, putting it on the shelves in, you know, 1400 stores. So I thought it was, um, yeah, pretty much a very big deal. Very big deal. You know, you know, when I finally could get you, you know, to, to get on here for a few minutes, I was like, child, I cannot just put up no fly, okay? I got to go do a whole video for sis. Yes, thank you. I know I can't wait. I'm going to repost that next. Yeah, I'm just super proud of you. I'm super, thank super, you. super proud of you. And you know, as I always tell you, and I know, I know how it is because people always say like, Crystal, I believe in you. I believe in you. What can I do to help you? And you know, I never know. You know, I never know. And I'm always extending myself to you. Just, just letting you know that I just believe in you. I believe in your brand. And I, you know, I, I don't want anything in return. Just yeah. if there's anything you can do and I still owe you that fabulous lunch. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I got to still come and visit you. I know. The snow kept messing us up, but I think we are past that now. So I hope. <laughs> and you're past juicing? By the time I get back to you, I done had 12 donuts. I might need to start juicing again. No. So what it we gonna make it you, work. Sis, you was looking good on vacation. Snatch. For the birthday. Yes. Snatch to the gods. What's Snatched, okay? I was on everything like <laughs> I love it. <sighs> yep, so I know you are super busy. I'm not gonna keep you here forever. Just anything else you want to share with the people, give them something, leave them with something, anything. No, I'm really proud of what you're doing. I love, you know, where you are, and like you said, um, your baggage um is just something I think it's it's turning into really good baggage. Like I think you know, baggage could be viewed as something that's negative. But I think that you have, you know, like I think, especially black women, we carry a lot of baggage, we carry a lot of weight. And so I think that you're definitely um, showing how you can balance and sort of, um, you know, even alleviate the baggage. Um, but in a, I'm in sure short, how to you know, stay, that shit. Yep, and how I'm to stay true to you. <laughs> yes, and I love it. And you're doing a really good job. So, you know, keep it up. Got it. Okay, well, I'll be waiting on your text so that we can yes. finish our date and everything. And thanks again for joining. And thank you, everybody, for watching. This was I Come With Baggage. Thanks, Crystal. <laughs> Bye. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.